It's one of the most shocking, earth-shattering, heartbreaking stories ever told. Maybe the most shocking, earth-shattering, heartbreaking story ever. God comes to dwell with us. God shows us a love the world has never known. We respond by rejecting God over and over and over again. And in the final humiliation, we hoist the Lord of creation on a cross, pound nails into his hands and feet, pierce his side with a spear, give him gall to drink, and leave him to die, an innocent between thieves. It is the most shocking, sad, and unforgettable story you could possibly tell or imagine. After you hear it, what else is there really to say? Whenever I'm tasked with preaching a sermon on Palm Sunday, there's a part of me that wonders, can't we just sit and let the story sink in? Can't we just dwell with our Lord, the betrayal, the grief, the horror? Why are we still talking? So let it sink in now. Let the images move before your eyes. Jesus, triumphant, riding into Jerusalem on a colt. Can you see him? Can you hear the crowd shouting with joy? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Hosanna! And then let yourself feel Jesus' agony soon after in the Garden of Gethsemane. Feel how his heart is caught in his throat as he tries to pray and can't because the tears are choking him. Feel his disappointment, his anger, his anguish as he cries to God and is met with silence, as he goes out to his friends and finds them sleeping when he needed them most. Can you see our Lord? Can you see him before the courts of the high priests and then before the mighty Pilate? Notice the cool of his brow as these high and mighty ones push and needle him and try to get a rise from Jesus. Can you hear the exasperation as it creeps into their voices as they try every way they know how to trap him and fail? And the crowds... Please, let yourself really hear the crowds. Crucify him! They said it louder and louder. Crucify him! He's not one of us. He's not our king. Do you see the spittle flying from their mouths as they shout and beg Pilate, to take Jesus away and leave them in peace. And do you notice that the crowds are not the only ones here? Oh no, do you see the women? The women of Galilee who loved and provided for Jesus. Do you see them? Do you see them refusing to hide but instead following his every step. They are bent over, beating their breasts. And then they are arched back, wailing to the skies. Do 
you hear their voices? Do you sense their longing? Walk with them. And now, do you see it? The hill, that desolate mound called Golgotha, which means skull. See the Son of God stripped, vulnerable, abandoned, mounted on two pieces of wood, his body stretched, taut up the center, his arms painfully extended, his legs pinned, nailed, weak, dying. It is noon. One o'clock. Two o'clock. Notice the sun hiding its face as darkness creeps over the land. Do you hear his voice? Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Take in his grief, his resignation, his total surrender. Can you feel Jesus' last breath? Can you see him dying? Can you sit for a time at the feet of our crucified Lord, even if it makes you tremble? Tremble. Tremble. Can you stay? Pay attention, people of God. Let the story unfold as if you were there with Jesus. If not now, when? In the week ahead, you may be back at church I certainly hope you will be. <laughs> come for Tenebrae on Tuesday. Come for Holy Thursday. Come for Good Friday, the vigil. And go about your week. Buy your Easter ham or lamb. Prep the Easter baskets. Get ready for the feast that's to come. Whatever God leads you to this holy week, just don't miss the chance to re-enter this mystery, to get steeped in this story, to linger and let the horror and the wonder work its way into you. Because it's tempting. It is so tempting to just avoid it or speed right by. I don't know about you, but I tend to start Lent strong. <laughs> And then I get kind of soft by about week three. What did I promise anyway? <laughs> oh, yeah, I said I was going to do the daily office every day, avoid fried food and shopping. Sorry about that, God. <laughs> I promised to get on it in a big way this week. But, you know, the disciplines themselves were never really the point. They are the way to to a closer walk with Jesus, who suffered and surrendered so much. They are a way to snap us out of moving through life on autopilot. So we pay attention. So we feel him, see him, love him. So please pay attention this week 
dwell more intentionally with our Lord than you do at any other time of year. Inhabit his story fully. Because, you know, every time we hear it, we're in different circumstances. That means every time God comes to us afresh. You are certainly not who you were a year ago, my friends. I know I'm not. Over the last year, we have stepped out further, further on faith, learning to, to move together deeper into the wilderness. We have known heights, and we have witnessed crucifixions in Ukraine, in our own family and friend circles. And we are not done. We're still waiting for a resurrection life we don't yet know. The only way to find out is to pay attention. Especially now, especially while we're still in this Lenten wilderness, draw near to Jesus. Taste him, feel him, see him, hear him, hurt with him. Allow whatever in you needs to grieve and die. Allow all of that to rest with him. And when he rises on that great getting up morning, and he surely will, you and I, we will rise too. But for now, in this holiest of weeks, we watch. We grieve. We yearn. We breathe. We dwell. <sighs>